Hello and welcome to the September 2nd edition of the Gold Goats and Guns Short News. My name is Tom Luongo and we have a lot to talk about. And today, I want to talk about Europe. Specifically, I want to talk about immigration policy and the fracturing of Europe's political scene occurring over said immigration policy. With the protests in Chemnitz, Germany, in the state of Saxony, now on its eighth day, it only highlights the real divisions politically that are coming, that are happening all across Europe, even in the, the core countries like Germany and like France. The Alternative for Germany party staged or tried to stage a peaceful demonstration the other day, which eventually led to some violent clashes between them or at least support their supporters and Europe's version of Antifa. I find that fascinating how the media is doing everything imaginable. If you do a Google search on like Chemnitz riots, you'll see like 25 to 30 links with the words far right riots uh, in the titles and in the headlines of a situation which has been for the most part fairly peaceful. Now, this gets worse for the European Union going forward because now, re just recently, Italian Interior Minister and Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini and the head of the League, formerly the Northern League, is now calling for a league of leagues across Europe, allying himself with Hungarian President Viktor Orban and the rest of the Visegrad countries, which would be the Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary, and Slovakia, along with Austrian Prime Minister Sebastian Kurz, in calling for a complete and utter overhaul of the European Union's immigration policy, specifically the Dublin Rule, which states that the migrants that come into Europe, uh, whatever country they enter in through, that's the one they should seek asylum with. And this is an undue burden on countries like Italy and Greece who are in close proximity to Northern Africa. And of course, Northern Africa is a mess because of U.S. foreign policy and European foreign policy in North Africa creating said migrant crisis, which Angela Merkel and George Soros and the rest of them have used for political or attempted to use for political advantage. Unfortunately, it has completely backfired on them. And why this is important now is because we're moving into EU budget talks in September for the next five years, where they're going to set the budget for the next five years. But more importantly, is that um, European parliamentary elections are going to be in um, sometime next year, which is going, which all of these uh, leaders of the effectively anti-immigration Event of the, for lack of a better term, nativist event, event are, um, are gearing up for that now. They're already starting the process of saying, we are going to remake the European Commission. This is what Orban wants. This is what Fini wants. And these are the two strongest voices on this front. And, you know, this is Italy. They cannot be marginalized here. They're one of the third or fourth biggest economies in the European Union. They're an incredibly important part of the European Union. And as I've said many times with uh, Italy's very tenuous budget and debt situation, sovereign debt situation, they have tremendous leverage over the ECB, the Bundesbank, the IMF and everybody else because, you know, as these emerging market economies continue to implode, now Argentina, Brazil, South Africa, on top of Turkey, which Italy has a tremendous exposure to, they all are putting pressure on the EU's budget at a fundamental level and are going to eventually overwhelm a situation there and contagion effects are going to create a spiraling sovereign debt crisis. We're already seeing the beginnings of it. And so between that, the, the, the economic realities of what's happening against the backdrop of trade wars, escalating tariffs, Donald Trump's weaponizing the dollar and everything else, you have the political instability brought on by pushback against ruinous immigration policy in much the same way that you have it happening here in the United States. So what I find interesting now is that 
Orban and Salvini are now naming names. They're not just talking in glittering generalities now. They're not saying we need to, to, to do something about this. They're calling out Emmanuel Macron, French President Emmanuel Macron, as a quizzling of George Soros. They're naming George Soros as part of the problem. Now, that's not new for Orban, but it is new for Salvini. And remember that Donald Trump has given tremendous, um, you know, emotional or, or diplomatic support to the Italians in their fight to uh, revise their budget and overhaul their, their, their government finances and their debts, uh, debt situation with respect to the EU. And I fully believe at this point that Trump is pursuing the kinds of policies that he's pursuing in order to force this situation to its crisis point, in order to weaken Soros, in order to weaken Merkel and Macron and, and others and the rest of the quote-unquote globalist, or what I like to call the Davos crowd. And so it's going to be really interesting to watch this continue to play out because this is going to be the hot-button issue in 2019. It's going to be an important issue that the media here in the United States does not want to talk about in two months in the uh, midterm elections. Okay, The media here in the United States keeps framing all of these issues in terms of racism and and... And, and all of this stuff has nothing to do with that. There's so many people voted for Donald Trump because he wanted to close the border. And he's gotten nothing but pushback and nothing but insane levels of opposition from former Obama administration officials and the, for lack of a better term here, the deep state and the shadow governments here in the United States. And so all of this is happening against the backdrop of John McCain's ridiculous funeral procession, which went on and on and on and, and, and veered not just into hagiography for God's sake, but into almost like, came almost ludicrous, right? How much they tried to pump this man up as some kind of hero while we're seeing headline after headline connecting the dots that Russiagate is going to collapse, that the European Union is undergoing significant stresses due to migration. Um, it's all just kind of crumbling around them all at the same time. And McCain's funeral is, was an obvious attempt to try and shift the Overton window away from all of this stuff and towards um, a kind of pro-American jingoism and forget everything about John McCain's record about putting us in a position to be uh, to be at odds and practically at war with Russia, which again is another hot button issue for people who voted for Donald Trump that, he, that we wanted him to improve relations with Russia, not destroy them. So all of these things are, it, it, all of this stuff is coming together at the same time and it just betrays, <clears throat> excuse me, a ridiculous level of desperation to try and maintain these narratives when these narratives are falling apart at every level. And Salvini and Orban calling for effectively a League of Leagues is in stark contrast to what's going on in Britain as they go out of their way, as the, as the Theresa May administration goes out of their way to betray Brexit without making it look like they're betraying Brexit. It's all such, frankly, horseshit. It's, it's, it's sad, and it's all it's going to do in the end is hasten the demise of the entire European continent while the people who have been in control of that project for the last two generations steadily lose control. Now, one last point before I leave is that there is significant, there's going to be a significant attempt to push, uh, to pull apart the Italian coalition over immigration that... Um, Luigi Di Maio, the head of Five Star Movement, and Salvini are at odds over effectively immigration quotas. And Di Maio is not happy with Orban in Hungary for not taking one migrant and is now threatening to not pay the European Union its $24 billion that it's supposed to pay into the budget every year. He's now holding, he's now holding that over Merkel's head. So this thing's just a mess. It's actually quite fascinating and quite great, but Merkel will attempt to, to drive a wedge between DeMaio and Salvini over this. I don't know that it will 
um, work, and ultimately with the uh, with the latest Italian polling having Salvini's league now ahead of De Maio's five star movement. If this current government were to fall in the next couple of months and they had to revote again, Salvini would just wind up as prime minister, and then the headache for Europe gets even worse. It's been the Gold, Ghosts, and Guns short news for Sunday, September 2nd. If you like what you heard today, please give a like and subscribe down below. That would be great. Really appreciate it. You can also follow my work over at goldghostsandguns.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Gab at TFL1728. And if you like what you heard, you can um, support me over at my Patreon at Patreon slash Gold, Goats, and Guns. You guys have a great Labor Day holiday. Keep your stick on the ice.